What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Lore. Today we're going to be talking about a slightly different topic. Today um, today is going to be more of a how, how-to thing, or how something happened. And this topic in particular is recommended by Periodics. So it's how Malag Ball ended up taking over the Imperial City. And now, to kind of just do a, we're going to do a brief overview of Malag Ball, uh, talk about basically just the steps that he took up into getting his power I'm not gonna go in I'll go into a, a teeny bit of how he ended up failing obviously because uh, obviously the Imperial City is not under Malag Ball's control by the time Oblivion happens so let's get down to it so Malag Ball is the Daedric Prince of Domination and Enslavement the God of Schemes the Harvester of Souls the Father of Cold Harbor and the Creator of Vampires there are many titles for the Schemer Prince, yet the biggest triumph was conquering the Imperial City. But to analyze this, we must go back a bit before he invaded Nern. Now, Meridia, the Daedric pr Prince of Life and Infinite Energies, and I say Prince because technically the Daedra are genderless, but she is often depicted. Meridia is often depicted as a female. So, and Malagbal were at war. Those two were at war. They used their Aliyad worshippers as their soldiers and they f to fight. As a result, Malag Ball would order an attack on one of Meridia's cities, cities and open several portals to Cold Harbor outside the walls. As the city began to fall, Meridia used her artifacts to teleport the city into Cold Harbor using the portals outside her city. This also became a safe haven that Malag Ball could not see or act on. It became the Hollow City where Meridia would actually reside herself, taking to the skies of a groundskeeper. Now you'll need that information just for the end, but I decided to cover it just so you can kind of feel, get like a full circle going. Now in 573 of the Second Era, five years before the Soul Burst, Emperor Leovo Leovic of the Longhouse Emperors legalized Daedra worship throughout the crumbling Cyrodiilic Empire. As a result, Varen Ecliarios of the Cho of Choral rose up and deposed Leovic and proclaimed himself emperor after he stormed the Imperial City. Afterwards, he wanted to legitimize his claim by becoming Dragonborn. The five companions of Varen himself, Manny Marco, Lyris Titanborn, Sai Sahan, and Abner Tharn would set out on a two-year quest to find the Amulet of Kings. Upon doing so, they, form, they performed the ritual that Mighty Marco claimed he could perform to make Baron Dragonborn. Well, it turns out this was a trick, and Mighty Marco betrayed them and used the ritual to weaken the barriers between Nern and Oblivion. He was an agent of Malag Ball. This allowed Malag Ball to initiate the Plane Meld, which basically created the Soul Burst, which would allow uh, Daedra to co come in and conquer the Imperial City. But that wasn't the only reason that the Imperial City fell. The companions scattered, and at the same time, Clivia Tharn had made a pact with Manny Marco, the King of Worms now, who backed the new king and with Imperial soldiers, on the condition that he would resurrect dead soldiers to help protect the Empire, because the Empire was crumbling. So, flipping over, gotta flip my pages. <laughs> now, as we know, the more people who believe in Daedra, the stronger they are, as shown in Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, with Clavacious eh, Vile, and the Daedric, who is the Daedric Prince of Trickery and Wishes. By the time you see him, his temple is, I believe, actually taken over by vampires, which is kind of ironic, knowing that we're talking about Malak Ball, who created them, and he has no ability to stop them. And it, it really, the Dragonborn, if he wants, he can clear him out, or he doesn't have to. He's not as strong as he would like to be as his power is sealed inside the the statue, sorry. But Daedra worship is stronger now that it is legal throughout the Empire. And with Clivia Tharn and Manny Marco pulling the strings, Malag Ball has full reigns on the city. Now there was also Legion Zero. Legion Zero was created it was actually originally a normal Imperial Legion, but they were the Legion that was stationed inside the Imperial City when the Soul Burst happened. And they were created when Malag Ball offered them promises of fortune and everlasting life. And it ended up corrupting this, um, this Legion, and they became allied with the Worm Cult, 
and Malagball himself. They were also reinforced with Daedra and Jamora alike as well. This would also strengthen Malagball's grip on the city. Now, it should be noted, Malagball had full control of the city and this was all because of Manny Marco. Ironically, Manny Marco had no loyalty to Black Ball. He wanted to trap the Daedra's soul and feigned his loyalty to do so. He thought if he could trap the Daedra's soul, he could eventually replace Malag Ball as the god as the Daedric Prince of Schemes. Now, this was already known by Malag Ball, and Malag Ball would capture him later on and torture him later on in, in Cold Harbor. However, the cards were already played, and Malag Ball had his power. Manny, Manny Marco had set everything in motion as an agent of Malag Ball. Malag Ball was now already in the city himself. He had agent, or agent, he had Legion Zero to strengthen and make, prevent anyone from coming in and that is how he came to be. That's how he conquered the Imperial City. Now of course he would be stopped and the reason I brought up the Meridia part at the beginning is because Meridia would help put an end to him using her safe haven from um, the Hollow City and the Vestige would obviously play a big part into that. The Vestige is the playable character in the Elder Scrolls Online and Malag Ball would eventually be defeated. But of course Malag Ball had to conquer the city. That That is an incredible feat for a Daedra and having not played all the way through Oblivion as I know that has Hanius more up basically invading um, Nern. I have not completed the Elder Scrolls Online yet either but I played halfway through Oblivion. I played half, pretty much halfway through The Elder Scrolls Online. So it's funny that I don't know too much about it, but I was still able to kind of wrap my head around all this. It's not like Dark Souls lore where I'm not unable to just figure things out. But uh, that is the first how to thing I'm going for. I hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And if you guys have any recommendations of topics, please let me know. I'm doing it, put them in the comments below. If you want to talk about lore, please. Let me know. I'll talk about comedy. We had a, I had a long, long conversation with somebody earlier on about lore. It went on for like probably like 20 comments. But I, yeah, let me know. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.